Today we'll be getting to know our bodies, our throttle bodies. Hey guys, so I wanted to do a quick video uh, on the throttle body. Uh, in my last video, I kind of bumbled through um, the sensor names and I definitely didn't uh, explain them at all and I think it's a good thing to explain. I told you you need to have sensors, but I didn't really tell you why. And uh, I think it's important to know how to diagnose bad throttle body sensors, especially if you've got a 4.0. Um, I've had tons of problems with IX, problems with uh, TPS sensors. Um, so we're going to do a quick video on how to remove the throttle body, how to clean the throttle body, how to clean all the throttle body sensors, and definitely how to uh, diagnose each of the sensors, all right? So let's go inside. All right, when you get up in your engine bay, you got your air box, comes right here to a torque box, and right underneath that is where your throttle body is. So what you're going to do, take a long screwdriver, should be a hose clamp, holding your uh, torque box onto the throttle body. Get in there, loosen that up. I mean, there, there are all different ways you can take this whole air box out and everything. I'm trying to do this one quick. So we're just gonna loosen that guy up. Disconnect this vacuum line just to make it easy. Put that aside. Don't forget to put this back on at the end though, or your Jeep's gonna run rough. Okay, so pop that off. And find some way to put it aside. Okay. I'm actually, let's see if that work. It works good enough for our purposes. Let's see. Now let's get you in there. Right there. That's the throttle body. That's what we're looking for. Now right here you have your throttle cables, uh, your um, cruise control and stuff and all of these just pop off if you take a look at them there's a post on this arm and then an opening on the back of this plastic connector pop them forward and they come right off it's really not rocket science you'll figure it out so pop all three of these cables off to get them out of the way the next thing you have to do is there's a uh, here's your map sensor here is your throttle positioning sensor and back here is your IAC. I know you probably can't see that. The point is, undo the connections. They got these uh, wire harness connectors. Undo them on all three of those harnesses. All right, if you've never had them off, they may be a little difficult to get. I have had these off on several occasions. This IAC's a little difficult because it's right up against the uh, Right up against the fuel rail there. All right, we're gonna get the IAC off once we've got the other, uh, once the rest of the throttle body's off. 10 millimeter socket will do it. You're gonna get in here. There's four bolts that hold your throttle body down. All right, now the last thing you wanna do is strip one of these or break one of them. So go gentle. Another thing to be careful of is uh, you're gonna have your manifold wide open once you take this off. If you drop anything down in there, you either need to fish it out or you're gonna have a big problem. So be mindful of that, be careful. If your throttle body's gonna be off for an extended amount of time, maybe, um, maybe put a piece of masking tape over it, you know? So pull your bolts out, put them up here. I'm gonna crack these four bolts off. Now the reason you'd want to take your throttle body off and clean it is because these things build up carbon. And what that can do is um, affect your throttle response, it can affect your overall horsepower, and it can lead to um, failure in your throttle body sensors. So I like to pull it off, I don't know, maybe every 20,000 miles, maybe more, and um, they make you know, like carbon choke cleaner is what you're supposed to use. Brake clean works just as fine. Uh, you could use uh, ether, you know, starting fluid if you're in a pinch. I suppose you could just scrub these components if you really wanted to. 
Um, the point is, and now this one, this throttle body is actually brand new. This is a uh, an oversized throttle body that I got to try to eke out a little bit of mileage and power on the highway, and it did work. Um, this is a 63 millimeter throttle body. I think stock is 61 or 58 something. Uh, this one's a little bigger is the point. I just put it on a couple weeks ago, so this one's not going to be dirty at all. But I'm still going to take it off to show you all the sensors. Felt bad after my last video. I, I didn't fully explain what each of those spare sensors was that I was carrying around and why. So this is kind of a follow-up to that video. Um, okay, got all four bolts out. Now that I've got some room, I can get to this IAC a little easier. There we go. Now there's a um, there's a gasket underneath your throttle body. You want to be careful to not damage it or lose it. You see that right there? It's this paper gasket. Because this one's new, I'm going to be able to slip it right off. If yours is stuck on there, you may just want to leave it there. All right, I'm going to put this aside. All right, here we go. Here's a pretty good uh, shot of the throttle body. Uh, it's actually backwards. This would be in the front when it's on the vehicle. I have it backwards so that um, I can show you the sensors, right? First one is your uh, IAC, idle air controller. What this does is allow some air. You can see this slit right there. And right there, it allows some air to bypass this butterfly valve. And uh, in that way, it moderates your uh, idle. This is what it looks like. It's got, uh, this is a servo motor that pushes this plunger in and out. And it uh, creates a seal inside this housing here to determine how much air is allowed to, um, you know, bypass the butterfly valve. Uh, symptoms of a bad one. This is a pretty dirty one. Um, if I pulled this out of one of my vehicles, I would clean it up. Um, symptoms of a bad one are rough idle and random stalling. Uh, sometimes you can just clean, these are all, this is just carbon deposits. Sometimes you can clean that off. Uh, sometimes the servo motor goes and you need a new one. I think online they're probably about 50 bucks at Rock Auto, maybe a little more at like Advanced or O'Reilly's. Go to the junkyard, find one, you know. It may not last as long as a new one, but it'll work. Next one right here is your map sensor. Um, I think that stands for manifold actual pressure. Uh, it's essentially like a mass airflow sensor, which is what I called it the other day. Mass airflow sensors actually would go like down here. It'd be a wire that goes in your intake. This has the same effect though. Essentially what it does is tell your ECU how much air is getting into your manifold. Um, and then, it, you know, your ECU tells your injectors how much fuel to send in. Um, to match that. So idle air or IAC, IAC, MAP or MAP, um, manifold actual pressure. And then this, this is the demon one. This is a throttle positioning sensor. What it does is, I don't know if you can see, there's two teeth in there. Those two teeth go on the output shaft for this butterfly valve. And the butterfly valve turns those teeth can you see that? I think you can kind of see it. It turns those teeth and that tells your ECU where your throttle is. Um, helps with kick down to your transmission um, and uh, also fuel air mixture. Uh, a lot of times symptoms of a bad throttle positioning sensor will be you're, you're not shifting. Um, random speed increases, especially on the highway. If you're cruising down the highway and all of a sudden your Jeep just lurches forward, um, a lot of times that'll be a throttle positioning sensor. Um, it seems like all the symptoms of a, of a bad throttle positioning sensor are like a bad transmission, you know. Uh, it happened in both of these Jeeps at one point they went and I thought my trans blew. Because I'm on the highway screaming I'm at like four grand before it'll shift. And what actually happens is you'll get a dead spot in here. Usually at like a quarter or a third throttle where you, you tend to hover a lot, that spot will go dead. So if you're at a quarter throttle it's not actually sending a signal to your ECU, um, which means your transmission doesn't know where the throttle is and your transmission will just go nuts. If you power through it, you know, you put some more throttle on and move past the quarter or a third, it will, um, you know, it'll shift normally. So it gives that symptom of like a, 
a loose band in your transmission or bad transmission, uh, stop here first. I pick these up anytime I see one that doesn't look too screwed up. That's the other thing. They don't collect carbon like the other two do. They just, they just are, you know what I mean? And they just go. So I have two of them at least in all of my vehicles. Um, just in case it's a dumb part that goes often on WJs. Another thing that happens because of where your throttle body is, you go through a big mud puddle or a uh, rain puddle, water splashes up. I've had these blow on the trail before. After I go through a mud puddle, nothing's shifting. Um, I've lost IAX the same way. Um, happened in the tan one, went through a huge puddle. I lost my IAC. I thought I had water in my manifold because it wouldn't idle. It was rough. It was all over the place. I had to have, have it damn near floored just to keep it lit. I limped it home. Was looking all around, pulled my throttle body off. There's nothing in my manifold. Turns out it was just this little guy. Thankfully, I always carry spares. Um, so, yeah, you've got your throttle body off. And chances are, if you haven't had it off, all in here, all of this is going to be black with carbon. Like that. Uh, your butterfly valve is probably going to be black with carbon. Maybe even up here. What you want to do is take this, get some... Uh, I use Bray Clean. They make uh, carb and choke cleaner. I think that that's just about the same stuff. Ether will work. Anything that's going to cut through that carbon and you just blast it off. You want to take off especially your map sensor first because this has a rubber hose on it and if you douse that in Bray Clean or something you're going to dry out the hose and it's going to crack and it's not going to work right. Um, you want to take off this, take off this. You remove your IAC from this housing, but then you can also remove this housing from the throttle body. These are all stars, maybe T25s, I think. I think everything on here is held on with a T25, at least on the WJ. Maybe this one might be a little smaller. That might be a T20. Um, so pull this off, this off, and this off. Put them aside, then remove this housing. Inside of there is going to be all black too. And you want to blast all of them off, get them nice and clean, and that's it. Then you put it back on. Um, when you put it back on, you want to make sure that, uh, I like to get all the bolts snug first, then go back and tighten them in a star pattern, just like anything else. It's not like a head gasket where there's a huge danger in, um, torquing it down wrong, but it doesn't hurt. You know, it's good, good process. Um, once you get that on, make sure you connect all three of these, make sure you reconnect all of these I've, <laughs> I've put these back on and uh, I forgot to you know do like one of them especially like the IAC in the back you go to start the Jeep and it runs like garbage and you're like what the hell did I do um, you know you're an idiot you forgot to connect one of the connections all right well, that's it um, it's a simple process 10 millimeter socket some kind of long screwdriver carbon choke cleaner parts cleaner ether something to blast that carbon off that's it um, some things to watch out for. Once again, don't drop anything down your manifold. It's not going to be fun trying to get it. Uh, make sure you replace that throttle body uh, gasket, that little paper gasket that's under there. If you rip it, go and get a new one. Um, not only do you want to make sure to reattach this vacuum hose, you want to be careful for all these. When you're working in this area, it's really easy to uh, break one of those like rubber elbows or something. Um, or knock one loose, you know, if, especially if you have something, any that are dry rotted or already loose over here, working in this area, you might knock one off. You don't even realize it's broken, you go to turn your Jeep on and uh, it's running like crap. You're thinking it's a throttle body you just worked on when in actuality, it's actually what happened right here. I don't know if you can tell. There's a piece of just like regular rubber tubing where an elbow should be. I was doing something else. I hit it with my elbow, I broke it because it was dry rotted and uh, all I had was a piece of hose to fix it. Um, I hope this video helped you out whole point was just to uh, spread a little bit of knowledge. If you have a 4.0, you're definitely going to want to know how to diagnose uh, throttle body sensors. In my experience and all my buddies, they go all the time. They're susceptible to water um, uh, and they just break. You know what I mean? They just go out. I got a buddy right now who has a ZJ that won't start. We think it's the IAC. We just have to get around to it. I've had, can't tell you how many TPSs I've run through. Um, I think Eric had IAC issues in his ZJ. Um, so uh, it's definitely something you want to be aware of. Um, let me know what you think of the process. As always, leave me a comment on the video. Hit that subscribe button. I uh, hope you guys are enjoying these videos. I'm enjoying making them. Uh, leave me some suggestions if there's a video you'd like to see. Um, I don't claim to be an expert in literally anything, but uh, I've managed to keep quite a few Jeeps on the road for quite a few years. Um, so let me know.
Thanks, guys. See you next time.